Welcome to Harvesting Clouds, where we take a practical approach to learning and leveraging clouds. This video is a first part in a two-part video series where we are looking at 10 different ways to move the data to Azure storage accounts. This video assumes that you already have a storage account ready. So if you don't have one, I highly recommend that you check the earlier video to create a new storage account by clicking on the link in the top right corner. Also before the end of the next video, I'll show you a tip how you can find out which way will work best for your scenario without memorizing any of these options. So let's get started. First thing that we are going to talk about is usability of each and every way of moving the data. How are we going to determine which way will work best for my scenario versus which way will work best for your scenario? From that perspective, we are going to categorize each and every method into three different categorizations. The first one being frequency. How many times are you going to make the move? Is it going to be a one-time move where you copy all your data from on-premises and move it to Azure storage account? Or is it going to be more repetitive in nature? Second categorization is going to be the mode. How are we moving the data? Is it online over the internet or is it offline where you copy all the data onto some disks and ship it to Microsoft and they copy the data for you? Finally, we are going to look at which way will work best depending upon how much data in total are you going to move? Are you moving only few MBs or GBs or few terabytes? If your data is going to expand or you need to move a huge number of data, huge amount of data, then which way will work best for you? As we discuss each and every way, we are going to take a look at each of these categories. The first way is going to be the simplest of all the ways we are going to discuss today. That is directly using the Azure portal. So here I'm already logged into the Azure portal. I'll start by navigating to my storage account. In the storage account, I can save different types of data. Under containers, I can save all my blob data, like my images, my video files, my VHD files, etc. Under file shares, I can create SMB file shares where I can keep all my files as well. Under tables, I can store tabular data, non-relational data. Under queues, I can store queue related data. So I'll click on containers. A container is like a folder where you can copy all your files. A file in Azure is called a blob or rather in a storage account is called a blob. To create a new container, click on plus container. Provide it with any name. In here, what you need to note is the public access level. By default, it is set to private. That means nobody can access your data in this storage account anonymously. Other options that you have is blob, anonymous read access for blobs only, or container, anonymous read access for containers and blobs. This option means that only the files inside your container can be read anonymously. The last option means anything. All the containers, all the files can be read anonymously. If your data is critical and you do not want to expose your data, then I highly recommend to leverage only the first option that is the private option with no anonymous access. Click on create to create a new container. A container is a requirement. You need to have a container where you can dump your data, where you can upload your data. So I'll click on the container. In here, what I can do is I can upload different files directly by clicking on the upload button. So click on this button. It will open up an upload blob uh, pop-up. In here, I'll click on this folder icon to navigate to the folder from where I'm going to copy the data. I'll select all the files that I want to copy. And then I can select whether to overwrite if that file already exists. And under advanced, I can provide an access key and the primary thing under advanced settings is the access tier that you are going to select. So each file will be called a blob. And then for each blob, how you are going to access that blob and how frequently you are going to access that blob. Based on that, you select the access tier. So access tier can be hot, cool, and archive. Archive is you dump the data. It is there. You do not need to access that data anytime soon. Cool is there is some cool uh, there is some warm-up time. 
for you to be able to access the data, but it, it is much more faster than the archive. Hot is your frequent data that you need access to immediately. After you have selected all these settings, click upload to actually upload the data. It uploads each and every file in a separate thread. And finally, all your files have been uploaded. This pop-up, it leaves it open because you may want to copy multiple data, multiple files from different folders in here. But this is not efficient. This way is not efficient at all. You want to scale up. You want to be able to copy and paste multiple folders and huge number of data and have multiple threads created for each and every blob that you are copying. These files were very small, so it did not took much time. But we want to scale this. And that brings us to the second type of moving the data that is using easy copy utility. Easy copy is a small command line based data transfer utility. As they say, all good things come in small packages. This is one of those package. Now with this particular utility, you can not just copy the data. You can also download the data. You can copy and download the data to and from Azure blobs, files, and Azure tables. It gives you bulk data transfers at very high throughput. Behind the scene, it creates multiple threads to copy over the data or to download the data. We'll look at few of the options related to this particular utility. This is also the most boring utility amongst all the lots, just like with every command line utility. But don't underestimate this. This is one of the most powerful tool in your arsenal if you utilize this properly. So here, I'm already in the command prompt. So the first thing I want you to understand is with just like with any other utility, you need to understand how you can explore the help regarding this particular utility. There are a lot of things available online in Microsoft documentation, but all of that, you don't even need to go over there. All the help is available directly from the utility. Just type dash dash help with a space after the command line utility and will give you all the available commands and what is the usage. Now, let's say I want to understand what are the different options with a particular command under this utility. For example, login. This is the first thing that you need to do. Login is the first item that we are interested in. Copy is the second item. So let's take a quick peek at what these options are. So what I can do is I can type az copy and then I can type the command. And now when I type the help, it is going to give me the help, not for the complete utility, but only for this particular command. So it tells me that I have multiple options that I can use. The primarily one that we are interested in is the tenant ID. So what you do is you do az copy login and then you can provide a tenant copy if you have multiple subscriptions linked with your particular ID. So if you do az copy dot exe space login, it asks you to navigate to this particular URL. And in here, you can enter the code that is being displayed on your screen to authenticate this particular AZ copy login. Now, after I log in, I can use AZ copy exe and then copy command and then copy all my data. But if I have to go through all these hoops, it is beneficial for me if I am doing it in a programmatic way. If I need to do the same thing, leverage the benefits of AZ copy, but use a graphical user interface, I have the option to do that. And that takes us to the next way of moving the data that is leveraging something called Storage Explorer. Behind the scene, it uses AZ copy now. Earlier, it did not. It was using the REST based calls, but now it is using AZ copy as we'll see in few moments for now. So I'll minimize this. I already have Azure Storage Explorer opened up. So here I can see all the subscriptions that are available to me. When you will launch this, you will not see all the subscriptions. You will need to connect to the Azure account. There are multiple ways that you can do that. And we'll explore this particular utility in details. But for now, let's take a quick peek. So here from the left hand side, you can click on this plug kind of icon. And this will launch a pop up where you can specify how you are going to connect to your Azure storage account. 
you can add an Azure account where you will see all the storage accounts under that account. Like I am connected right now. So in here for now, I'll expand the subscription under which I am interested in the storage accounts where my storage account exists. I'll expand this particular storage account. And this is the storage account where I want to copy over the data. And under blob containers, there are no blobs right now. In fact, there is one that we created a few moments ago directly from the portal. So what I can do is I can either copy to the same blob or a same container rather, or I can create a new container. I'll provide it with the name. And then in here, now I have the option. So now what is unique about this is you can not only upload the files, but you can also upload the folders. So I'll click on upload folder. And then in this particular wizard, I can click anywhere in select folder and I can select my folder. And all the files in this particular folder will be copied. Let's take a quick peek. What files are here? I have three image files, one around 42, MB of a video file and then one VHD file, which is roughly one gigabyte. And I'll select the blob type. And then I'll say that upload VHD files as page blobs and then click upload. That's all. In the bottom section, it will show me the current status. It will say that it will give the status as queued first and then transferring the data. It will show me the speed at which the data is being transferred and the percentage of the data that has already been transferred. So after a few minutes, the data will be available and I will be able to see all the blobs that I am transferring in the section in here. So I'll pause and come back once the transfer has completed. Now after a few minutes, the transfer of the data completed successfully. Now one interesting thing that I want you to note is under activities where it says that the transfer completed successfully, you have the option to copy the underlying AZ command that it used to actually copy the data. So click on this and then navigate to notepad to paste that command. So here you can inspect what it did to actually copy the data. So it set some environment variables and then it leveraged azcopy.exe. It leveraged the copy command from that particular exe and then copied over the data by specifying source on my laptop and the destination in my storage account. So that's how it performs by leveraging AZ copy, all the goodness, all the high throughput that that particular utility provides, but still provide you with a graphical user interface. So I can double click on my container and can see all the files that are available that I uploaded to this particular container. I can click on each and every file. I can create a new folder here. I can copy the URL that specifically is for this particular blob, that is this particular file, by simply clicking on the copy URL. And then I can provide this URL to somebody else or I can use this in my code. I can clone this particular file by clicking on clone with new name. I can delete this particular file and I can also create a snapshot. That is, I can create a backup of this particular file. So there are multiple options that we can do, multiple things that we can do with Azure Storage Explorer and we will be exploring this in a subsequent video. By the way, this is a small install that you can download from Microsoft website and can install on your laptop. You can find all the links in the related blog, the link to which you can find in the description below. Let's wrap this video right here. We will be covering many more options in the second part of this video. The link to that should be coming up on your screen now. If you are liking the content, please do hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and bell icon to get notified of the latest content first. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.